People say overclocking doesn't help anymore, but what if I told you that's a lie? Overclocking can massively boost your FPS when done right, and I'll show you how. Modern CPUs and GPUs already boost high, but that doesn't mean overclocking is dead. In fact, it's the key to unlocking higher FPS, lower input lag, and smoother gameplay. Here's what it actually improves performance. CPU overclocking boosts clock speeds, reducing frame dips and stutters, which is perfect for competitive gaming. GPU overclocking gives you 5-10% to more FPS in demanding games, which is just free extra performance especially if you're on a 50 series graphics card now ram overclocking which is the real secret memory speed and latency can massively impact fps tuning ram can boost performance more than gpu and cpu overclock i'm going to break down each one and show you real results so we're going to be using call of duty benchmark and cs2 benchmark at a low resolution in order to see the differences between a ram overclock and a cpu overclock but as you guys can see our os is completely optimized and our bios so that also also helped a lot we're just doing that in order to take that out of the equation so as you guys can see 6000 megahertz and cpu is completely stock and we got around 239 fps on the average cpu and 206 on the low fifth percentile and low first percentile 195 so i'm also going to run cs2 benchmark at a very very low resolution so this is going to be like i don't know like 1100 by 664 so very very low resolution we're getting around 823.7 FPS and our one percentile is 250.4. So we're gonna keep that in mind once we start applying the overclocks. So I'll also throw in Fortnite in this testing just because why not? So as you can see, this is five trials of testing. So basically, each trial that you see right here is 60 seconds of me recording FPS in a FPS benchmark map, which is just a creative map that you just sit in a minecart for 60 seconds in it. So now we're gonna go to comparison and see what we're getting. Average FPS is 798, so just round it up to 800 and our 1% low average is 482.5 so 483 fps and our 0.1% low average is 198 fps so that's pretty much no overclocks nothing done to it on an i9 1300 ks and a 3090 i'm gonna go back to the bios and i'm gonna load up the ram overclock and see how much more fps we can get all right guys so as you can see the ram is set to 7600 cpus same thing not the clocks so now we're gonna run up the call of duty benchmark at the low resolution and see how much more fps we're gonna get all right guys so as you can see we did get a boost 252 fps on the average and the bottleneck did drop down a little bit that's just from ram overclocking so now we're gonna hop in the two other games that we're testing which is gonna be cs2 and fortnite and see how big of a difference it is all right so in cs2 pretty big boost right there we're getting around 869 average fps and our first percentile is at 284 so pretty nice boost just from overclocking the ram so this is fortnite right now got around just like 50 fps somewhere around there and our one percent lows did go up by around 20 our 0.1 percent lows did drop but that's probably just because of variation anytime you do some of these testings you might get 10 fps somewhere around there plus or minus that is just variation so in this case however substantial boost in performance just from ram overclocking this is just in creative convert this in game you'll get like how much the difference is so 50 more fps in game just from ram overclocking yeah that's a big difference so all right, so now we're gonna blend in the cpu overclock with the ram overclock and see how much more performance we're gonna get in all of three of these games all right so it took a bit of trial and error to get the cpu finally stable that just goes to show you guys what comes with overclocking but anyways we did gain around 10 fps from the cpu overclock and the ram overclock so we're getting around 267 average fps and our percent lows are way higher so the game just gonna feel way better and way smoother just because of that all right so due to the cpu overclock we did get 900 fps on the average fps in cs2 and we're hitting almost 300 one percent lows on cs2 so pretty decent boost in performance just from that now keep in mind this is on like a very low resolution obviously like we're on 1176 by 664 just to make the testing more cpu and ram bottleneck so anything that you do to the cpu and ram it'll just stick out instantly and show you more performance so that's the goal so as you can see a substantial boost in performance whenever you do a cpu and ram overclock so let us take a look at it so specifically we got 854 fps from the cpu overclock compared to just the ram overclock 
So we'll say around 10 FPS gain just from that. And our 1% lows, we got around 30 FPS, which is very, very high. And that's gonna actually make a difference how your game feels and input lag. And 0.1% low average jumped up all the way to or 232 FPS. So pretty nice boost right there in terms of 0.1% lows and 1% lows. So around 30 FPS just from a CPU overclock. So if you combine these two, I'd say you gained about 50 FPS just from the CPU and RAM overclock in terms of average fps in fortnite your one percent lows are going to be 10 percent better which is a substantial boost right there that's almost as much as upgrading your parts so there you guys go that's pretty much fortnite that's pretty much going to be the whole entire video right there like there's not much else to cover all you have to realize is that overclocking does in fact help in 2025 and you are going to get a substantial boost especially if you do the most important overclock in this video which is going to be ram overclocking now how do you get started with overclocking you can follow my intel overclocking guide on youtube that can help you get started with overclocking your cpu which is going to get you there i also have a gpu overclocking guide for nvidia graphics cards and you can do that on any graphics card that is nvidia using msi afterburner ram overclock is kind of a complex topic there are some guides for ddr4 that are out there that are very very easy to do and should take around two weeks to get done if you don't know anything about RAM overclocking. For DDR5, it's way more complicated because you're basically playing a casino slot machine with voltages. So in that case, I can't really say there's a good guide out there. And that's why we kind of just charge a lot for the services that we offer just because RAM overclocking takes a lot of time. And again, it's basically gambling with voltages until you get the specific voltages correct in order to achieve the frequency that you got stable. So in terms of overclocking, what we got stable on this PC is 5.8 gigahertz on i9 and 4.5 gigahertz on the e cores. So there's two different types of cores on the i9, but just keep that in mind, there's at two different frequencies. And the memory we got is stable at 7,600. I could probably push it to 7,800, but for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to pick something that's going to be easily stable on this PC. So that's going to be that right there. Now, the GPU overclock is very, very mild. What I ended up doing is doing an undervolt and a GPU overclock at the same time. And this undervolt and GPU overclock at the same time dropped the temperatures by 20 degrees, believe it or not. And we actually just kept the same FPS that we had before undervolting. So the win win situation in terms of that. Now, obviously, for you, the GPU overclock is going to be probably 10 times better. You might be able to do 1,000 on the memory clock and you might be able to do 150 on the core clock it just depends on your graphics card and what model that you have but that's going to be pretty much it for this video if you guys want all of this done for you cpu ram overclock and gpu overclock and optimizing your windows with this silly os custom os and optimizing your bios from a to z then click the first link in the description and book a pc optimization service it's guaranteed to give you 100 to 200 more fps and it's the easiest way to get this done without learning this stuff but if you want to learn it i do have videos on my youtube channel for CPU and GPU overclocking. For RAM, you're kind of on your own, sorry to say. Anyways, peace.